Hey guys, JH, welcome to Practice Tea. And the weather's getting better, guys. Wow. The weather's getting better. Beautiful today, 25 degrees. Amazing stuff. Okay, guys, maybe this video will be uh, the video that most of you have been waiting for. And I call it the baseline simplification of channel lock. Okay, just let me go through channel lock. Guys, what is channel lock again? Channel lock is a methodology of, of, of swinging a golf club where we swing the club in a channel beside our body as opposed to swinging the club in front of our body. Here, in, the, in this, this orientation of, of attack line. We're still swinging the club technically in front of our body because our body is facing this way. But we are endeavouring to swing it beside our body. Why do we want to do that? Because we want to swing the club in a channel. Why do we want to do that? Because if we swing it in a channel beside our body, it will come into the ball from in to out. Providing, and the caveat here is providing, the shoulders are closed. And the ball is played back off the trail foot. Now if I had my shoulders open and I swung beside my body, the club would start probably beside my body but it wouldn't end up and stay beside my body for the entire duration of the swing path into the ball because the shoulders would turn and particularly the trail shoulder, it would turn and would change the path direction of the club and take it from what we want to achieve which is into out to out to in. Guys we play the ball back off the trail foot because that basically locks in the requirement and necessity for keeping the shoulders closed. If we wanted to swing in a channel beside our body and we had the ball up there and we wanted to take the club beside our body we'd run into our body. We'd run into it there because the ball's here and we just want to take the club straight back. Can't do that. But as soon as we get here we can go beside our body here. They're the simplistic mechanics of this golf swing. Now it's, it's been in other videos but I'm trying to incorporate it and encapsulate it in one video here today. Now the other thing guys is of course that we have the ball off the back foot and if we've got the shoulders closed and if we were 90 degrees to our target line there and we had our shoulders closed and we wanted to keep them closed our shoulders were closed and we would hit the ball from that back foot the ball would go out there to the right of the target line. The target line is there, the shoulders are pointing there, so the ball would go there because that's where the arms are going to swing the golf club. So all we've got to do, and you guys can do this any way you like, all you've got to do guys is work out a process or a methodology where those closed shoulders are closed but they're parallel to the target line. Now for most of you that'll, that'll mean you know, turning around and facing more left with your lower body here. Now when I hit the ball you'll see you'll think I'm basically dead square but I'm not. It's only that I've instinctively now worked out how much left I've got to be when I set up. But guys this is it. I'll go over this again. Here we are. I'll get dead on. If we're going to be close to the target line with those shoulders coming in here and we start off parallel, there's, there's our body line, we're going to close our shoulders so our shoulders are pointing to the right of the body line which should be parallel to the target line so our body's pointing to the right of the target line. So if we're coming in with that much closure the ball's going to go out there. I just said that. So this orientation on the shoulders here guys has to be maintained but it has to be squared up to the target line and it still has to be it has to be brought around so that the shoulders are only incrementally shut they're not massively shut they're incrementally shut you, you, you cannot play this, this golf swing unless the shoulders are shut because you can't attack the ball into out every time and you can't start the ball in the same direction every time which is a little right of the target line whether you're left or right handed it'll start a little right of the target line whether it comes back or not is all relative to how much closure you've got on the club face and how hard you release the ball. If you don't have any closure on the club face the ball will just push gently, just a straight push. 
Now you can play with that shot, that's a straight shot, but you have to aim a little bit further left. I have the face shut down about three or four degrees and I swing into out about six degrees now. So I get a little gentle, you know, three degree draw most times. Basically, lately it's pretty straight. So guys, the simplicity is, what I'm going to say to you today is that just work out a way of getting these shoulders closed but then getting them around and, and just do it this way. Set dead square. This is a way of doing it. Set dead square to the target line. Balls back here. Close your shoulders. How much? Work it out. I close mine about, I don't know, 15 degrees. Right? And then I just want to just turn those shoulders around so they're only closed about you know, 4 or 5 degrees. But I, that's where I want to be at impact. Now all, how have I brought those shoulders around? I've just turned myself around to the, to the left of the target line. Now you've got to work that out, whatever that increment may be, whatever that, that differential, that angularity is, you've got to work that out guys, I've said this time and time again, but I'm reinforcing trying to put it all in one video today, so it'll probably be a long video, I hope I've got enough battery, I didn't check that, but guys that's what it's about, really that, that's what it's about. We can't play it, if I, if, I, if I just got back here like this, dead square, turn the shoulders, <laughs> ball goes 40 yards straight right for a right hander. Dead straight shot, but that's where my shoulders are pointing, 40 yards right. So I've got to bring that 40 yards right around to a couple of yards right. And how do I do that? I just move around like this. Now you've got to do this when you practice guys, you've got to work out your incremental differences what you need, how much you need to be around, but this never changes. Once this is in here, that's locked. That's part of channel lock. That, that shoulder girdle is locked. You never change that. Ever. Not ever. Margarita. Not ever, Margarita. Where did I see that? I saw a movie with that in it. Not ever, Margarita. Or it was a Senorita. I know, guys, I'm getting a little senile. So, okay. Back foot, back foot, back foot, back foot. Shoulders closed. Now, when I, when I look here, I'll probably look like I've got a closed stance, but it's only because I've already worked out how much left I want, I have to aim body to get my shoulders closed to hit it to that target there. <clears throat> now, the other thing is when you work that out, the taking back of the golf club. Now, what I advocate for everybody in every golf swing is momentum loading. You can't just take a club back and put it in place, guys. You've got to have some momentum in the golf club. So it basically orbits. When you've got pure momentum in it, it will go in an orbit, um, you know, purely radially. It'll do that. It'll feel like it's a straight line, like, a, like basically a linear line, but it's not. There's always some form of radius when the shoulders turn around the spine. But, but you need to be able to take that club head back, like essentially, like if I do that, if I did that a hundred times, if I just took that club back with momentum, I promise you, and I've done this, I've done this on a track man. I did this in America when it first came out. And if I do that with momentum loading, that club will position itself within half a degree every time. I did it over a hundred swings, just with a club head, just, just, just taking it back, taking it back, taking it back. You know why guys? Because that's a pure orbit. And how does that happen? Because it's got pure orbital inertia in the golf swing. You can't take the club back. If you take it back, if you take it back, guys, you'll take it back in a different way every time. But if you swing it back, if you inertia load it. Now, what I do, and what I've, I've said for most people, is that because we're here and we've got this orientation here in the backswing, uh, we push it back with that lead hand and we get that sort of throwback. That's what we call throwback loading. You don't have to do that. If, that. if that's difficult for you, that's a Count Yogi negative load. Or an old uh, Abe Mitchell um, slingback load. All the old guys from the 20s and 30s always slung it back like that. That's how they got the momentum. They worked that out instinctively. And they, and they slung it back and opened the blade because they had a lot of torque in those wooden shafts. So it was, they called it the St Andrews sling. They just rolled it open, going back, and they rolled it shut coming through. So it was rolled open, rolled shut. And they played pretty effective golf with that. But there's a lot of variables in that. So I take it back like this, guys. I push it back like that. 
I push it back like that. But you don't have to. You can. What you can do, as long as you maintain momentum, you can actually take the club back as you would normally, where you've got this formation here, like in a normal golf swing. In a normal golf swing, we have that configuration. See that pure, pure line there? You can do that. You can just do that off the ball if you want to. Once you've got here, just cock the, just just pick the club up and cock it off the ball. You, you can just pick it up and cock the club. Just cock it off the off the ball, but you've got to cock it straight. When you go back here, you've got to keep the club outside your forearm here or in line with the forearm. We don't want to cock it inside like that because that's a roll cock here. We don't want that. We want a, an up the plane cock here. So you can do that guys, you can just do that. Look at this. We get here, we can just go wham like that. That's still in the channel, look. And it's still got momentum. How do I do that? I still do it with the butt pad of my hand. I push it back like that. That's how I load it. I push it back like that. I pull it back a little bit with that, with that trail hand. I pull it back a little bit with those fingers here but you do, but the thing is the hands are still low and they're not wanting to jump up they're still loaded heavy we've still got heavy hands there here but it's not this this full negative load which which is difficult for a lot of people guys you think with all these videos I've done over the years okay I come over here and I practice in the cow paddock for a reason clearly because I don't get discouraged too there's a lot of people here today I would never get a video done today I, I appreciate the, you know, the people wanting to know about it and wanting to talk to me, but, but I, you know, I just can't get anything done. Particularly when I'm doing videos for my, my roster students. So I come over here. And it's uh, quite aromatic today, guys. There's a lot of cow pats around here and the wind is blowing straight. Yeah, oh, it's wonderful. Earthy, they say. Earthy. The earthy practice tree. Okay, so, so going back, guys, you can just take it back like that. As long as you swing it, you take it back, you can just cock it up like that. See, I'm cocking it up, the club is going up, but my hand is pushing down. I'm not doing this type of cock. I don't want to, I don't want to lift cock. I want to push down cock, here. I, I want to push, push, push it down. Whoa, gee, that's a good shot. And I'm really, I had a big workout this morning, guys, and I'm still battling the shoulder. And I know I'm a lunatic, but I can't, I can't stop. If I, if I don't work out every day, I feel really insipid and sloth-like. So in, most of the time I just train through an injury. I've done it my whole life and it's slowly getting better. Getting, uh, I get the blood pumping and sucking in a bit of oxygen, so that's good therapy. Yeah, so guys, if we take it back, we get here, and we take it back like that. See, I'm pushing down with the hand, but the club's going up. I'm not cocking it up like that, because that'll get the club off plane. So you can just take it back like that. You don't have to pull it in there. As long as it goes in the channel, you can push it in the channel. I pull it in the channel, but you don't have to do that. And if you're someone that's played conventional golf, and you've had this type of swing, which is a push, a push uh, loading, instead, instead of a pull loading, that's fine. I want to give you some options guys, but remember that the base tenet is, the ball's back, it has to be back. We swing the club beside our body, we have closed shoulders. And we have those closed shoulders when we hit the ball. And the club face is always pointing at the target. The club is going out on the line of the shoulders, to, for right handed to the right of the target line a bit, but the club face is releasing towards the target. My club face is closed at the dress a little bit. And as I come in, it just it just releases see there it is there guys it's just a little bit of a shutdown release but that's the inside of out part a little bit of shutdown release I get that little and the winds on my back here today so I'm trying to draw the ball back into the wind that's just an instinctive thing <clears throat> just an instinctive little thing right there Wow, I can't believe it, guys. Maybe it's hotter. Maybe it's 26, 27 degrees. It's, it's warm. Wow. Yeah, so here we are, guys. We're beside the body. 
I pull it back, but I'm not going to. I'm going, I'm going to push it back. It's going to be a pushback load. I could play with that. I could play with that because I've done that in my conventional swing my whole life. I've always momentum loaded the club, even in my conventional golf swing. So it's not hard for me to do that. It's just that in the initial stages of explaining channel lock, I wanted to get people to have a real feeling of being in the um, in the channel very early in the golf swing, and you certainly get that feeling when you when you pull it back when you negative load the club. I'll get square onto the so I'm going to just I'm going to I'm going to push down and I'm going to up cock it instead of uh, 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 negative lag loaded. So you can do it guys, it's no problem. It doesn't, it doesn't feel intuitive to me now because I've been doing, I've been doing lag loading. You know, I've been doing, I, I've been doing this. Now I feel a, a, a much more forceful load in there because I'm used to it. Uh, but you know, um, it's not to say that you guys have got to do that. You, you can just take it back and you can push, you can push it back in the channel. Well, I mean that that's equally as good a quality shot. Wow. I mean that's gone exactly the same distance the other shot, and there's posts out there on that fence out there, boundary fence, and they're six feet apart. I oh, know they're probably about eight feet apart. Eight feet, and those two balls just went in between those those two same posts. And that's my my alignment when I'm when I'm working. Here, guys, there's, you know, there's all the posts, and I have sort of eight-foot differentials, you know, and I might pick two panels or three panels, but that's my alignment on that on that out of bounds fence there. So we can push it here, guys. This is going to be up. It just through this, I just aimed this one. It went through the same panel. I just aimed this one to the right panel of that. Come on, Jay. Wow. Okay, my swing's a bit short and a bit crotchety, guys, because I'm struggling a bit with the shoulder. But what's interesting is that I found that with the, with the sore shoulder, wow, really gives me nice tempo, because I, I feel I can't attack the ball. Okay, let's just go over it. So we're playing it off the back foot. We're in here. We've always got this configuration here. Why do we want that? Because we don't want a lot of shaft lean. I'll just put all the, all the tenants in today, guys. We don't want to be here because we've got too much shaft lean. Takes all the loft off from that back ball position and the club face is open. As soon as I go there, the club face opens. So we're here. And, and I'm just going to push it back. Wow. Whew. Now that's a very easy, what we call in Australia, a dinky little swing. Nothing on that, guys, but boy, that ball is motoring. Nothing on that, and that's going normal five iron distance. That's just crazy. Push. Yeah, so instead of pulling it for the first bit, I'm pushing it. Pushing it, as I would in a normal golf swing, conventional golf swing. Push it into here. Push the hand down, the butt of the hand down, club comes up but it still stays on this line here. If I pull it in here, it still stays there. It goes in here and then reroutes. You don't have as much rerouting when you just push it up. So that might be easier for people. I'm used to that rerouting because I like the negative load. All right, you warmed up after those six shots, Joe. Stop complaining. Okay, I'm just gonna push, push load it. Oh, guys, my, oh, my. Now you can do it both ways. And I just wanted to get that across because a lot of people, you know, probably feel that's awkward to do that. So so if, you've, if you if you want the same conventional loading and that you have in your normal swing, use it. You've got absolute license to do that. Now the other thing, guys, when you set it set into the ball, load into your knees and into the back of your thighs. That's where you've got to be when you when you load. Don't get like this. I see a couple of the guys 
a bit like this and a bit look a bit looking like a bit robotic I mean it was a perfect shot but that's only because the plane is the plane is there but I mean that that's that's very stilted and very um, very tripody and we don't want to look like that so we want to sit here get in here just sit in sit in here guys just gonna push it down and back load it oh JH you're not that good boy well that just hit the post I aimed at the post I actually hit it at the post about this wide it's a bit of a fluke but I actually aimed it at that post I don't do that all the time nobody does that but it's nice to do it when you when you actually want to do it but I give myself sort of an eight foot window there and the worst is probably 12 14 foot window most time I don't use two panels which is about 16 feet I normally don't need that okay so we're gonna okay this is JH's load oh hit that post again hit it again well it didn't but I only missed it by a foot <laughs> oh gee, I wish I had a camera out there and a commentator I could be the biggest liar under the sun but I'm not guys I used to be a boy scout we don't lie a lot of people actually thought I was a girl guide actually when you were a boy scout and you the scouts were I mean they're very honourable guys but really in terms of they weren't all that smart I used to hang around the girl guys because there was lots of them always plenty of girls the boys want to hang around the boy scouts I want to hang around the girl guides I got a buddy of mine who's got the best body in the world super strong guy he's a ballet exponent and I said why why have you why did you take up ballet his name's Andre I mean good martial artist everything so why'd you take a ballet and he said next week meet me here at six o'clock I'll take you to the class I said I don't want to go to ballet class this was a lot of years ago so we go along we go to the studio in Sydney pull up and go downstairs and we go upstairs there's two guys there 30 girls 30 of the most beautiful ballerinas you've ever seen in your life and they're all there doing the exercise and he just walked in and he said why do I come here why well, I want to go and train in a gym with all those smelly hairy guys so when I got these beautiful absolutely magnificent ladies here and he said and there's 30 of them boy he was a fit guy he came down to my range years ago back about 1991 and uh, like the guys you know the guy was 50 then but you know the most magnificent body and had only just taken up golf and we had a back fence that was 240 meters which is about 261 yards and was 80 feet high because it was an industrial area first day there he got a four iron hit it over that fence four iron. he had so much speed so much flexibility hit it carried it 260 yards at 80 feet no one else ever ever did that ever but he could do it we never let him hit the driver because there was all buildings behind and he would the most we ever let him hit was five iron it was just but the flexibility and the speed he married one of those ballerinas beautiful lady I digress come on so push it back here James I hit that so hard guys I had so much speed oh yeah in the panel so much speed pulled me off the because it was I just generated so much speed in that wow that was just fantastic okay here we go wow these are great shots these are all good shots okay guys just some information for you and for you younger guys go and take up ballet and go to the studio first and have a look around okay guys uh, and girls if you're looking uh, 
Yep. Okay, guys, that's uh, that's just a little bit of what I call giving you options, and I'll ex, uh, ex I'll expand on that in the next couple of days.